So you're a young soccer player or you're new to the game and you're looking for some soccer drills for kids that are going to help you get better at soccer by yourself. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you some great drills and skills that you can do to develop your game. Hey guys, Dave here from Simply Soccer where we're working to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. And on this channel, we release daily soccer tips, technique and training videos. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our new videos or live streams. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you some soccer drills for kids in order to help them to improve their games individually. Because when it comes to um, development as a football player, you know, it's very important to get team training in and everything like that and get yourself familiarized with the game. But it's even more important to get individual training in because that's truly what's going to help you improve. You need to be getting a ton of touches on the ball when you you are a young player or really any player but especially when you're a young player it's essential that you're getting plenty of good touches on the ball every single day because that's what's going to help you develop as a player so we're just going to go over a few drills that you can do while you're at home or while you're by yourself or just you have some free time and you can do these drills in order to improve your game by yourself outside of your team training okay so we're going to get right into the drills right now and then afterwards i'm going to give you a few little skill moves that you can work on and is going to be effective for kids okay guys so the first drill we're going over is a very simple one it's one you've probably heard of it's juggling now especially for young players or new players this is a very important drill in my eyes because it develops a few things including your touch your familiarity uh, with the ball so how comfortable you are on the ball and I also love it because it's easy to do as in you don't need much to do it you just need a ball and some space um, you know it's not a tiring drill you won't do this for fitness um, so you can do this really every day um, and it's just a great and easy way to develop that touch and comfortability on the ball that you're going to need. Now, for young players, um, you're not going to be able to juggle, you know, that many in a row at first, but just keep at it. The important thing with this drill is to remain consistent. Do it for as little as five minutes a day and just try and keep it up as many times as you can. And if you drop the ball, just keep going. You know, I'll show some skills in this to kind of give you an idea of what you can work up to. Um, and you'll also notice I'm doing kind of different types of juggling. Um, but, you know, just work with what you have right now and work your way up. You know, you don't need to be perfect with this, but especially for you newer, uh, newcomers and uh, um, young players, this is still a great drill to do. It's still a great drill to do even when you're older because it really does develop that touch. It really does help you become comfortable on the ball. So this is the first drill I recommend. I think it's a great one. I still do this um, kind to warm up before I do my other drills. Um, so it still applies to you even later on in life or later on in your career. Okay, so another great drill for young players, or really any player, is wall passing. I still maintain that one of the best ways to improve your technique while shooting, um, passing, and to improve your ball control is simply practice hitting it against the wall and controlling it as the ball comes back. So you'll see that in these clips, all I'm doing is I'm waiting for the ball to come out uh, back to me. I take a touch, and then I play it back. Um, this is going to be great for children because it gets, again, a lot of touches on the ball. It replicates game like situations because the ball is going to be pinged back to you, uh, meaning you're going to have to control a ball that's moving quickly to you. And you're also going to get touches with plenty of your body, including your chest, your thighs, and your feet. This is something I used to do a lot when I was younger, and it really developed my touch. It helped my technique because I would practice my shooting. It helped my passing, and it overall just helped me get a really good feel for the ball. And I think that's a very important thing to develop from a young age is to get a feel for the ball. Know what happens when you hit the ball in a certain way. Understand what happens when you control it in a certain way. The more familiar you get with the ball, the better a player you're going to become. So for you young players especially, developing this early Early on is essential to moving on to more advanced stuff in the future. But even as you move on to more advanced stuff, remember, it's usually the simple things that will bring you success in this game. Things like ball control, that's one of them. Um, first touch is one of them. Your passing ability, your ability to know what happens to the ball when you do certain things is an incredible skill to have and will only help you as you get older. So again, for this, I recommend you do it 
you know, in some capacity every day, even if you can only find the time to do five minutes, do that. But honestly, for this one, I would really recommend you do it longer. You can practice your juggling for five minutes and then just kick against the wall for 10, 20, 30 minutes and focus on your touch, focus on your passing. And again, this is such a great drill because you don't need a partner for it. This is one you can do by yourself. Now, if you have a partner, if you have someone you can pass with, that's great. But I still think a wall is even better because it's faster. You get more touch. You, you know, the ball's not going to come to you cleanly. It's going to bounce, as you see me here, it's going to bounce in awkward ways. And guys, you don't need to have a wall at a field. It could be any wall. It could be a wall in a parking lot. It can be, a, you know, on um, on concrete. Um, usually the wall I kick against is, is not on grass. It's usually um, on concrete. So don't worry about that. Just find any wall. But I'm really telling you, you consistently practice against the wall, you're passing your technique, your control, you're going to see massive improvements to your game, especially for you young players. Okay, and so the final drill I'm going to recommend, especially for kids, are cone drills. Now, I think cone drills are excellent for improving your, again, touch on the ball um, and your dribbling ability and close control. Now, you can see I'm going pretty quickly in this video. Um, you don't need to go this fast, and especially if you're a kid or a beginner, you won't be going this fast at first. You just need to focus on weaving in and out of the cones as fast as you can for now. Now, what's important is you're developing your touch and keeping the ball close to you while you're doing this. So if you have to move slow, Slowly, that's fine. You'll work up to speed later. Um, you'll get faster the more that you do this, okay? So weave in and out of the cones with your right. You're then going to do your left, and then you're going to do both feet like this video demonstrates. Again, for any parents watching or any kids who are watching, don't worry too much about speed at first. That will be developed. That can be developed later on. First, you want to get down the touch and the technique. You want to be getting really good touches on the ball, weaving in and out of the cones. Um, and a good kind of way to measure how you should be doing this is challenge yourself to the point where you might be knocking over a few cones, but don't make it impossible. So if you're knocking over every single cone, spread out the cones a little more. If you're going through it, not knocking any cones over ever, then you might want to move them a little closer together or increase your speed. You know, you get better through challenging yourself, not doing the same thing over and over again in the same way. You get better by trying to do it a little more, trying to do it a little better, challenging yourself a little more. And especially for kids, you want to keep making sure you're challenging them. Or if you are a kid, you want to keep challenging yourself so that you are getting better and better each time. Now, it's not always a straight progression. There will be, you know, times where there's a you go up and you dip and you go up and you dip and that's natural. But don't worry about that. Just focus on this drill on weaving in and out the cones, getting down the technique. And again, this is another drill that I recommend you do often. You can do this every day for five to 10 minutes. Um, you don't need to tire yourself out. As you start moving quicker, you will get a bit of fitness in from doing this. But just make sure you're using both feet. Don't neglect your weak side, especially for your young players. Um, you know, you want to develop your weak foot as early as possible. Um, even if you haven't, you still want to develop it, but especially when you're a kid, start working on your weak side um, because, you know, it will give you an advantage as you grow up because many players do not develop their weak side. Um, and it's amazing, really. Um, and it's going to give you such a huge advantage if you're comfortable on both sides. So that's the final drill. Again, this don't overcomplicate this. Go at a pace that's good for you. Don't go as fast as I'm going here. Start at something that works for you. Just make sure you're challenging yourself every time you're doing this. Okay, so those are some great drills that kids can do by themselves, and if you are a kid or if you are a parent, um, that you can have your kid do that are going to help them develop even more as a footballer. Now I'm going to show you a few skill moves that are good for a kid to start with. None of these are complex, none of these are that difficult, but they can be very useful for a kid early on in their development. Okay, so here's the first skill move. It's called the drag back, and it's a very useful move that's even used in the professional game, um, you know, very quickly, but it's still used. Now, this is a great move for kids to learn because it's actually a very simple move. Um, it's one of the easiest to learn in my eyes. Um, it can be quickly developed, but it's one that can really help you because you can change directions quickly and really beat an opponent in that way. So if you need to cut back or change direction, it's a great move to have in your, have in your repertoire, um, and it's just great as a kid to get some moves in in your repertoire quickly um, or if you're a parent teaching your kid to get um, him or her learning some moves um, so that you can move on to more in the future as well but this is definitely um, a great one 
Um, you know, it's great in situations where you're running with the ball and someone's right on your tail and you need to turn quickly. Um, again, it's still used in the professional game. It's, even though it's a simple move, it's still used at all levels. So it's definitely one to practice. Um, I'm only giving you two moves here because, you know, I don't want you to be focusing too much on fancy skills yet. You can, you can work up to that. I mean, you, I really don't. I'm not a big fan of fancy skills in general. I'm all about the effective skills. And this is definitely one of them. So let's move on to the second skill. The second skill is the Cruyff, and this is one of my favorite moves of all time. Now, this is a little more complicated, but again, it, it's a pretty simple movement. You go to make it look like you're going to shoot or pass or cross, and you cut the ball back. This is another one I really recommend young players to learn. Um, one, because, you know, even though it's not the simplest, it is it, or the easiest, I should say, um, you can work up to it and you can get pretty good at it even as a young player. And two, because this is a move that's going to benefit you throughout your whole career. This is one definitely used at all levels. Um, every level I played at from youth soccer to the collegiate level, it's being used at. Um, you know, I see it used all the time in the professional game, again, at all levels, whether it's, you know, um, lower levels in the state lower levels in other countries, all the way up to the top tier levels in, in countries when I watch professional matches. It's just such a useful move. Um, and again, with these both of these moves, um, for you kids or for your parents who are teaching your kids, um, consistency is going to be what helps your kid get good at this. It needs to be done often. You need to be practicing this move, if not every day, you know, close to every day. You need to be doing, um, you know, a certain amount of reps every day. You know, if you if you don't have much time and you you can only get a little bit in, just do this 10 times with each foot every single day. That won't take you too long. Um, it'll take maybe five minutes, if that. Um, but through doing that, through building that momentum and consistency, that's what's really going to help you improve. And just to touch upon that a little bit, with all the stuff I sh I've shown you in this video, it's really going to be the consistency that you maintain or the consistency that you have that's going to allow you to improve. And that's an important lesson to learn moving forward because that's going to be what actually helps you get better as a player. So if you apply all this stuff that I taught in this video and things you'll learn as you keep getting better as a player and things you'll learn in other videos and other from other coaches, um, as you start applying those things consistently is when you're going to see results. You can't do these moves or these drills just once or twice and expect to see massive results because it won't happen. But if you do stick with these, I do promise you that you will see improvements. Okay, so there are a few skill moves that kids can learn very early on. Of course, you can always expand your horizons and go for more complicated or better moves as well. These moves are still great that I gave you, but you can always, um, once you have these down, move on to other moves. Um, but I do recommend, especially if you're starting out, to start with these ones. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Please share this video with your friends and teammates. Uh, like it if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm gonna have two more videos come across the screen that can help you out even more. So click on one of those if you wanna continue learning and come back tomorrow at 5 p.m. because we will have a brand new video for you. Remember, here at Simply Soccer, we're working hard to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.